This Chef's Kitchen podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download now at audiblepodcast.com slash the chef's kitchen. Now I'm joined by Rob Peters, wine specialist for PA Wine and Spirits, and I can't think of anything more festive than sparkling wine for the holidays. The fact that when you open sparkling wine, I think draws all the attention in the room. Yes. Especially when you hear the pop of the cork, and it's sort of the kickoff to a celebration. Like fireworks in a glass. Exactly. What is the difference between champagne and sparkling wine? Well, technically, champagne is a region in central France that produces wine, sparkling wines, from three specific grapes, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. And it's a secondary fermentation that occurs in the bottle. So part of the reason that French champagne is expensive is there's a lot of labor involved. Ah. There's multiple steps to producing it. And the steps of introducing the gas into the wine actually involves secondary fermentation in that bottle, which requires many years of aging that increases the complexity of flavor. Now, when we're having a meal, uh, you know, you usually think of sparkling wine or champagne with the initial toast. Correct. But we were talking earlier and you were saying that sparkling wine can be used throughout the, the meal. Sparkling wine is one of the most universal food wines. It's just picking the style that fits. But you can start off with a uh, Blanc de Blanc, maybe yeah. with appetizers. I would suggest possibly using a Brut Rosé for the main course. And then you could find either a uh, Demi Sec or possibly the Asti that we have today would be great with uh, desserts because your wines should always be slightly sweeter than the foods because if your wine is austere and the That's food is tip. sweet, then the wines come off unpleasant. And again, your website, uh, finewineandgoodspirits.com, yeah. is an excellent w uh, resource for us as hosts uh, to use when pairing up sparkling wines and champagne with various foods in our menu. Right, because there's a whole host of, we can just call it sparkling wine to cover the gamut yes. from all parts of the world. And a lot of them are using different grapes. Well, we know, uh, you know some of the international uh, sparkling wines like Prosecco and Cava. I believe you have some examples of that here in your display. Yeah, we have two Cavas that we brought. Uh, the thing about Cava, if it's mentioned on the bottle somewhere or reference to, they're following the same steps that the French and Champagne are following. Ah. Secondary fermentation in the bottle. Let's open a nice bottle and of sparkling wine. What I thought we'd use is this Domaine Carneres, okay. which is a French house, the Tattinger family, and they've set up shop, as I say, in California, so they're using California technology and fruit. This is made in the same way as champagne, but it's about, typically champagne on the store floor is, say, 35 to about $40, and it goes up from there. Okay. Base point, where you can get into really good California sparklers for 15 so it's a nice 20. economical so, choice then. Because I have a lot of times people come in and they're asking me for uh, sparkling wine, but they don't want to spend $40. Yes. And you can't blame them. That's a, that's a lot of change to drop. But what you want to do is after you remove the foil is you want to put your thumb on top of the cork. Okay. All right, and you want to remove the cage. The cage is what keeps that cork. Always keeping, though, your thumb on yeah, top I of the cork. Yeah, I want to keep some pressure on okay. that. And even when I remove the cage, I try to keep my hand close by. So then you want to remove it. And notice my backing away. That's, yeah, but you know. I'm using my right hand, the strong hand, to hold the cork, and the weak hand to twist the bottle. And you hear and the there, sizzle. And that's the best way to open sparkling wine. Wine specialist you Unless are. Unless you're in the locker room of some uh, playoff game. Where right, you just and watch. you just want it to fly out, out maybe, it. yes. And I've always believed in tilting the glass and allowing the wine to just flow down the edge of the glass. And look at that energy and activity in that glass. Look at that. Right. What's the price of this wine, Rob? This is about $22, $23. Okay, so, so it's very economical, you can get yes. It, and this is a reliably uh, rated by the magazines consistently. Very Shall we try? Times. Cheers. Cheers. To the, to the holidays, holiday to season. Philadelphia Magazine's Guide to Holiday Entertaining. And uh, other examples, if I could just run through a few of these mm -hmm. that we have. Mm, There's a Rosa Rodali. You mentioned serving sparkling wine after the meal. Yes. That is great with chocolate. And it works with... And it's a also, red, it's a red yeah, sparkling wine. Yeah, this is, comes out and it's beautiful in the glass. Yes, it looks color. chocolatey in the glass, actually. And even that Emeralds mentioned that. We have a Martini and Rossi. They're Asti. That's sweet. So I would say suggest serving that with uh, fruit. Okay. It'll have enough. The uh, classic French Moet would, and the Vive would be good for appetizers. Uh, we have a Brut Rosé that would go with main meals. Very good. With all and these kinds are all of different meals? price points, too, because we're talking about about $20. We're talking $40. You can get into cava for around $15, okay. roughly, something like that. So a cava is, is very economical, yeah. then. And if you want to go off the beaten path a little bit, yes. I brought this sparkling Shiraz from Australia. 
which is really unique. It's uh, got a real heavy flavor component to it. What about those, those occasions that are extremely special? Say we were having a New Year's Eve dinner with a, some of your favorite friends, and you really wanted to splurge on your sparkling wine or champagne choice. What would you recommend? Well, out of this lineup, I'm a fan of Krug. I think that they blend up to 10 to 11 different vintages into their reserve, from reserve wines. And this is their non-vintage. Okay. And it's uh, about 160 a bottle. But I've had several customers that I've sold this to come back to me and say, I opened the bottle, I used half of it one day, I recorked it, I came back to it the next day, and it was just amazing the amount of flavor that came wow. out of it. They That's... said the wine actually developed overnight. You know, a lot of people uh, come into the store and they're afraid to buy a full bottle for a couple yes. people. So what I recommend is if they add one of these small recorking devices okay. to their kitchen supply. Yes. Because what you can do is you pop this back on to the bottle itself, it'll preserve the gas, put the bottle back in the refrigerator, and then you can revisit that in a day or two. The great thing is having sparkling wines at the holidays. It's yes. also a great gift. Oh, wonderful gift. When people gift. come in and they ask me about what should I give, I always say sparkling wine. Thank you for your wonderful tips. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you for having great us here. Great to be back. This Chef's Kitchen podcast was brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download now at audiblepodcast.com slash the chef's kitchen. Log on now for over 75,000 titles to choose from for your iPod, iPhone, or MP3 player.